This is thank you again back with another weird video actually. It's been a year since I probably made my biggest jump in terms of editing my videos. It's from Premiere Pro to Final Cut Pro and I'm not gonna lie I've been loving Final Cut Pro all this while and I wouldn't be making this video if I hated Final Cut Pro. And I'm gonna talk about why I love it and I'll probably use it for the foreseeable future unless we all start editing on iPads. But anyways let's get started with this video. A bit of a history lesson here. I started out in 2015 with Windows Movie Maker. At the end of 2015, I started using Vegas Pro 13. And I sticked with Vegas Pro 13 till the end of 2016. Vegas Pro is not bad to be honest. Even if you're using it currently, you can still continue using it. But I really found the effects very limited. The effect controls were very complicated and messy for me. I really didn't understand anything on Vegas Pro to be honest. So I made the jump to Premiere Pro in early 2017 and I've been using Premiere Pro till January 2021. Four years. But here's the thing. I've been thinking of switching to Final Cut Pro since 2016. And the only reason I haven't switched till now is because I didn't have a Mac. I used to hear this thrown around in every YouTuber's video about Final Cut Pro being really fast and optimized for the Mac hardware. So I made the jump in January 2021 and I bought the M1 MacBook Pro. And you bet one of the reasons were Final Cut Pro. Actually, one of the reasons were Final Cut Pro. So the first video I edited on Final Cut Pro was the M1 MacBook Pro unboxing and ever since then I've stuck with it. It's pretty amazing and it's safe to say I wouldn't be going back to Premiere Pro at all. I should not look at my script this much. So I'm going to be splitting this video into the good and the bad. But before all that, just keep this in mind. It's not what you use to edit, it's what you create with it. So with that, let me get started with the good. Speed. This thing flies. We're talking leaps and bounds better than Premiere Pro. As of now, I've edited at least 60 plus videos on Final Cut Pro and with the exception of, of either one or two videos, everything else has been super smooth to work on. And trust me, one of the best parts about Final Cut Pro is it rarely lagged. Playback smoothness is very smooth. Premiere used to drop frames every time when I used to playback footage. This doesn't do that, which is an amazing thing about it. But the best part about Final Cut Pro is actually background render. So it essentially renders parts of your videos when you're not using Final Cut Pro or when it's running in the background. Now the caveat to this is that it takes up a lot of storage but you know the hit is worth it. Actually once I had a project take up 100 gigs of storage just because of background render. Just be careful with it sometimes. Another thing speed really helps in is putting out content quickly. Specifically, short form content. You see what I'm talking about. I'm pretty, I'm pretty much talking about YouTube shorts or Instagram reels or TikToks. And ever since I started creating short form content, it's probably the same time I switched to Final Cut Pro. Things have been super easy to work with. And you know, shooting short form content on phones, especially iPhones is pretty easy. And I just shoot them, airdrop them to the Mac and start editing them. It takes approximately an hour to edit them in Final Cut Pro. It's just very easy. I'm spoiled by the speed. And the thing with short form content is you have to be pretty quick, concise and time things perfectly to under a minute. And I find Final Cut Pro really easy to edit in that regard. But apart from speed and export times, one of the most important things for me has been autosave. You know, it has removed that, oh gosh, I gotta save my project every five minutes in my mind. Now I don't even think about it anymore. It just runs in the back of my mind that my project is already saved. Now again, yeah, this adds up to consuming a lot of storage, but the trade-off is worth it in case something goes wrong and Final Cut crashes. And speaking of crashes, Final Cut Pro has only crashed five times on me. And that's probably because I've been trying to, you know, put 4K 60 clips over multiple layers. It's probably because of the M1. I mean, the M1 isn't limited and that's in comparison to Premiere, which has crashed a multiple amount of times when I used to use it. Now both Final Cut Pro and Premiere Pro have a lot of plugins but I feel that Final Cut has a better collection of them and they are easy to install and use compared to Premiere Pro. One such plugin would be Motion VFX which has a ton of plugins that are easy to install and use on your videos. I use a ton of them on my videos itself and I'm not sponsored by Motion VFX or anything. It's just something that I've been using for the past one year and it's pretty good. Now let's talk about pricing. Unlike the Creative Cloud suit which now relies on a monthly subscription, Final Cut Pro is just $2.99. 
and that's just for an upfront cost compared to paying monthly for Premiere Pro, which would cost you about $22 per month. Now that may sound cheap, but this would add up as you go on using your software for years and years. And in about two years, you would end up spending more than what Final Cut Pro costs. Now, if you're a student like me, the entire Pro Apps bundle would just cost $200. And that's a bargain because you not just get Final Cut Pro, but you also get Motion, Compressor, Logic Pro, and Main Stage. Now I'm someone who really hates subscriptions, so I like the pricing model that Final Cut Pro offers. And if you did like my take on Final Cut Pro, a sub to the channel would be amazing. And now, let's talk about the bad. Yeah, I did change the wallpaper to show that we are talking about the bad about Final Cut Pro. Number one would be it's just Mac only. As I said in the beginning, I've heard about Final Cut Pro in 2016, but back then I was on Windows, which means there is no Final Cut Pro. Now I get it, it's been made with Mac hardware in mind, specifically now with Apple Silicon, but at least bring it to the iPad. Final Cut Pro has just been Mac only for the past 10, 20 years. It could come to the iPad now, and we have the M1 chip on the iPad Pro, so I'm pretty sure so it's like more than capable. Number two would be color grading. It's not that I find Final Cut Pro very bad for color grading. It's just very complicated. It's been an entire year and I've still not understood how to color grade on Final Cut Pro. I mean, it took me about, I think, three months when I started on Premiere Pro to learn color grading, but you know, now I'm trying out different things and I find color grading really hard on Final Cut Pro. But fortunately, there are plugins to help you color grade on Final Cut Pro. And especially applying LUTs are very annoying on Final Cut Pro. You cannot really adjust what goes on your LUT. And the last one would be file management. It's just horrendous on Final Cut Pro. First of all, you really cannot create bins. So when you import clips from multiple cameras, they all get mixed and get placed on the same library. And speaking of events, all your projects get grouped into this one whole event, unlike Premiere which creates separate project files for each of your videos. Now I find the Premiere method easier to work with since if you want to share a specific project it's really easier that way and as all projects get piled onto a single event it just ends up taking up a lot of space. So that's about it for this video this is my two cents on Final Cut Pro. My opinion is I'll be probably sticking with it for the foreseeable future but anyways this is thank you and I'm signing off you guys have a great day peace. I've been recording for 20 minutes.